Section 3.2 is linear functions and modeling. So taking the properties that we learned about in section 3.1 and applying them to real world situations. So first thing, just a little reminder, we talked about this last section, equation of a line. You have slope intercept form right here, y equals mx plus b, and point slope form y minus y1 equals mx minus x1. You'll also see it sometimes with that y1 added to the other side, so it looks like a translation. So here we're looking at models. We have scatter plots. So a scatter plot is a plot that has a bunch of data points without any line connecting them. And we want to look, okay, is this going to be well represented with a linear model or a nonlinear model? So take a minute and look at these four and decide which ones you would use a linear model for and which ones you would not use a linear model for. So most likely you would use a linear model for these first two. They look pretty linear. This one definitely does not look linear at all. It actually looks very quadratic probably. This one again does not look linear at all. It looks maybe logarithmic or um, rational or exponential, something along those lines. But these two definitely, this one's increasing and then this one's decreasing, but they're both linear. So even if you represent things with linear models, there's some that are going to be well represented and some that are not well represented. This first one here is pretty well represented from the line. The way you can tell is most of the data points are very close to this line of best fit. Over here, this one, not so much. It's pretty random. You have this line of best fit that's been calculated, but everything is pretty far from the line. So this one is not very well represented. There's probably not a very good model for this one. So what tells us how correlated two variables are is what's called the correlation coefficient. We can't prove causation, we can't prove that one thing caused something else, but we can prove that they're correlated. So we denote it with an R, and they range from a negative one to a one. The closer it is to either positive or negative one, the higher correlation, think like a 100% correlation. If it's a 0.8, it would be like an 80% correlation. The closer it is to zero, the lo lower the correlation. So think again, like a 0% correlation. If you get a 0.2, that would be like a 20% uh, 20 correlation, not very good. Negative correlation, so if you get something that's between zero and negative one, that just means it has a negative slope as one increases, the other one decreases. Positive correlation means you have a positive slope as one increases, the other one also increases. So if you have something that has a pretty good correlation coefficient, we can then use that model to extrapolate data. So the way that we, or extrapolation means predicting the future. So if you're given a certain amount of data, predicting, you know, what's going to happen 10 years from now if the trend continues. The better the correlation, obviously, the better the prediction. In this class, most of the way we're going to find all of this is via your graphing calculator, either Desmos or your actual TI graphing calculator. It will give you your, gra your correlation coefficient and will give you your model that you could then extrapolate from.